My name is Phil Freelon. Uh, I'm an architect in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. That's on the east coast of the United States. I started my firm in 1990, so uh, we're going on 21 years in practice. Uh, prior to that, uh, I worked for other firms for about 13 years. Our firm has about 50 people now. We were larger a couple of years ago, uh, but after the economic downturn, we've settled in at about uh, 45 or 50 people. Uh, our work profile is in the public sector primarily, and so we do work on college and university campuses uh, for municipal government, state government, uh, we do museums, we do libraries. Uh, and I would say that um, we, we do work for everyday people. We, we think that it's very important uh, for the average person to experience uh, beautiful, uh, inspiring architecture not only when they go to um, a famous building, but every day. We just finished a bus station in the town where I live, Durham, North Carolina, that I think very uplifting for the average person to come and see. And so that, that's been a driver for our practice. Uh, even as we do uh, high profile museums, it started uh, by wanting to provide um, beauty for uh, just the average person, whether they're going to school or going to work or taking uh, the train or whatever happened. Architecture is the creation of the built environment. Um, whether it's a, a chair, um, this sofa, the very small scale environment, or whether it's a city or a region, um, it's all design, it's all architecture for us. And so uh, if it has to do with uh, you know, the integration of the natural and the built environment, I think we as architects play uh, the pivotal role in, in creating environments for, for, uh, for our, our culture and our uh, cities and our, our localized environments. We, we uh, d design furniture, uh, we design buildings, and we're involved in uh, planning projects at a larger scale as well. Innovation is one of the drivers for us, um, and, and not only for its own sake to be doing something new, but to keep our eyes open and to be involved in academia so that uh, we're, we're learning and, and continually uh, in touch with new ideas and with young people. And this feeds what we do in, in our work. And uh, because our work is done in a very collaborative environment, uh, there isn't one person that's set in his ways, his or her ways, an older person that's passing down the knowledge you know, it, it, it happens in a very organic manner in our office so that um, good ideas can come from the last person hired in the office who might be an intern or it could be the older individual myself, let's say, or anyone in between. And so uh, we think that, that innovation uh, happens when ideas are, are put on the table and discussed uh, and that the, the question remains uh, suspended in the air for a while before uh, a solution settles to the ground uh, and that can only happen in the kind of environment that encourages um, you know communication and introspection uh, at, at all levels and that's what we strive to do. You cannot I, I don't think you can flourish uh, and do good work in this profession in a vacuum you know, uh, off in a room by yourself, you know, creating uh, work um, outside of the kind of interaction that we see here. And I, I wouldn't go beyond that to say that, um, you know, allied disciplines and even disciplines that are not allied, that, that are a far stretched from what we do as architects, it's important to get in those networks as well and to have um, uh, contacts in, in, in the sciences and in the arts uh, outside of architecture. Uh, literature, uh, you know, the fine arts, etc., dance, all, all these things can inform who we are as artists and at the end of the day it, it, it really does help to um, deform the work that we do. The internet, it, it, to me, is just another way of, of, of gathering information and 
and information flow both ways. And so we're, we're learning through the internet. We're able to visit places that we uh, ordinarily wouldn't see. We're able to um, hear about new ideas uh, and theory uh, of, of architecture uh, and just you know, have, a, have a broader uh, reach as, as we're looking to, um, to learn more about our craft. And so uh, it, it's just another tool. Uh, 100 years ago it was letter writing, okay? So now we have other ways of, of communicating uh, with each other across disciplines. And so the internet, you know, it's, it's not a novel thing anymore. It's, it's, it's everyday life. I mean, it's, it's part of what we do every day when we get up in the morning. And so um, the, the question is, you know, what's the next step, right? Because the internet is here, it's, it's, it's a base level uh, important tool for everyone. Well, let's go back to the web and the internet uh, and say that uh, you know you should explore what it is about that school that makes them unique uh, and, and they're, they're all very different. I mean I was just talking with someone about the uh, Boston Architectural College. This is an architecture school that is geared toward people who are working. They come at night. A professional level um, education that that is, is focused toward that niche. Whereas, um, you know, in the same city, you've got the GSD at Harvard, a, a totally different focus, a different mission. Uh, and, and so that's one thing, you know, do, do your research. I would also visit the place, um, physically go there. Uh, you can learn a lot from just walking through the studios, talking to the students, talking to the faculty. It's imperative to go there. You know, what you observe uh, against what you've read about and what their their stated mission is uh, and, and a lot of architectural education uh, the, the core is the studio environment and so getting a sense of how that is structured you know what are the the um, the ideals what are the tenets uh, uh, philosophically of that school you, you learn that by talking to faculty and students and then physically visiting the institution for me um, you know, probably the most important thing is, um, you know, attracting and retaining talented people because you can't do it alone. Uh, and we all know that it's a, it's a team effort. And so I attribute any success that I've had to uh, surrounding myself with, with great talented people that are like-minded. Uh, and the way that you figure that out is you, you have to be explicit about your views and your mission and vision so the people can kind of look at that and talk to you and decide, well, I want to align myself with that or I don't. Um, if you're vague about that, you can waste a lot of time, um, you know, being associated with folks where, where there isn't a common uh, understanding and you don't figure that out until years later. Well, I've always been real specific about what I wanted to do, why I wanted to do it. There's a vision, there's a mission, and we talk about that with everyone who has an interest of coming into the firm and also trying to be proactive out into the schools and, and recruiting uh, the kind of talent that, that we, we think we need to uh, propagate the work that we do.